Thanks for listening. What I'm proposing to do is offer a study guide on Amoris Laetitia, Pope Francis's apostolic letter on the joy of love, um, with some wonderful approbations, some praise. There are so many beautiful things that he addresses, chapter four being one of the most beautiful of the whole 125-page uh, letter, um, which is a meditation on uh, St. Paul's writing to the Corinthians, love is patient, love is kind. He takes all those beautiful thoughts and uh, elaborates on them. Beautiful stuff, Holy Father, and uh, anyone who can read them is will be blessed. What I want to call your attention to is share some of his references that I do believe need a great deal of explanation because they're in some ways ambiguous and can be taken the wrong way. So let me hope to try to be uh, a faithful defender of the church and a faithful uh, ambassador of Pope Francis by trying to point out some of the ambiguities and try to help us read this encyclical. Um, for instance, in the second chapter, we read this, um, which has to do with to whom is he writing? I, I think if you lose sense that he knows his audience is large and he's trying to address himself to a certain kind of audience, if you are not in that certain kind of audience, you will find some of this rather confusing or even almost embarrassing. The community that he's really trying to reach for are the unevangelized, the marginalized, the people that are mad at the church from the get-go. Okay, so if you're not in that category, you have to understand these different audiences. A little bit like Jesus in the gospel. When Jesus speaks to the people, many times we hear in the gospels that the apostles later talk to him and say, why do you speak to them like that and to us like this? Either you speak to them in parables and we, you explain them to us. How come you don't explain the parables to them, but you explain them to us, etc., etc. And the Pope, in keeping with that insight of our Lord Jesus Christ, who knows his listeners are of different caliber, shall we say, we have to read Amoris Laetitia with the same introspection. Um, for instance, um, here's what we find in paragraph 36. It's in the second chapter of Amoris Laetitia. He says, we also need to be humbled and realistic, acknowledging that at times the way we present our Christian beliefs and treat other people has helped contribute to today's problematic situation. We need a healthy dose of self-criticism. Now, humility is good for everyone, but I want to point out to the fact that it's a little confusing to who, who in our church today those who are not of the marginalized, those who are not of the I hate the church already, uh, try to convince me of how to come back in. I'm talking about the rank and file priests and lay ecclesial ministers, the ministers who work in the many ministries of our parishes, etc., especially in the marriage ministry. Um, who needs to be self-critical the most? I propose that the question needs to be asked, is the Pope referring to those people who are in the marriage ministry business who have rejected humanae vitae and do not present it in a beautiful way? They are, uh, those who reject it internally often present it with negativity, with criticism, with unbelief, as it were. So my first point of, of this study guide is if he's not talking to you, and I don't believe he's talking to me because I don't believe I have treated um, our Christian beliefs in such a way as to hurt people, or as sometimes people say, hit them over the head. Uh, truth is truth at times, and we are constantly finding ways of presenting the truth, but one realistic, application of applying a message in the church today has been to do, to ignore the truth. Those are the ones primarily who need self-criticism. Tune in next time. I'll share ambiguity number two.